This is this is getting out of control, man. I can't believe this dude, man. Listen, Deontay Wilder made him many things, man. But listen, I don't think he's that retarded, man. The costume, throwing Kenny Bayless under the bus like that. Kenny Bayless was there for you. Kenny Bayless took a point from my boy Tyson Fury. Like, Kenny Bayless was there to make sure there was no inside fighting because you can't fight on the inside. Bayless is there for Floyd Mayweather for that same exact reason. Come on, bro. First is the costume. Then you had issues with your leg before the fight. Then your hip is messed up. Then your training ain't no good. Then he conspiring with people from the crunk gym to make sure you lose. Like, what's really going on with you? What's really going on in your circle? That you have a trainer, head trainer, that's throwing a mark under the bus as well. Like, there's so many moving parts in this thing. It's ridiculous, man. Now, we can talk about Anthony Joshua, how he made no excuses, but we're not even going to pull Anthony Joshua into this, man. Deontay Wilder, you got to take responsibility for your actions, bro. And what, what, what do I mean? His actions, meaning he never wanted to learn how to box. He never took the time, all these millions of dollars that he got, all the time and opportunity that, that he has. When you got money, what does that mean? That means you got time to breathe. Bills are paid. You can do whatever you want. You understand what I'm saying? That means he could have went to the drawing board, learn how to box, learn how to move, get better coordination, listen to the people who know boxing and understood that you can't do that for the rest of your boxing career without getting stopped and embarrassed. Sort of like you did against my boy Tyson and Fury in the rematch. You see what I'm saying, people? Now, I understand this is his first time taking the L, right? So, emotions are high. You're trying to find excuse from somewhere, trying to figure out what went wrong, picking and looking at every little thing, making a fool out of yourself at the end of the day. Most importantly, your fans, most of them are making excuses for you. Things that, 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 that are not true. They're just making up stuff. They're doctors and lawyers now. They found their degree by typing in a diagnosis. You with something that nothing that never happened to you. It's getting ridiculous, bro. You messing up boxing. You making us look bad. That's why I told you he's not our champion. He can't be our champion because of his boxing skills and the way he think and the way he carry himself. Point blank period, man. Look, a black man runs a black man. At that, a black man says, I'd rather die in a ring, right? Than walk out. With the towel thrown in. Same thing, right? He says this. And in the statement, he says, yeah, I know I got eight kids, but we talked about this. What does, what, what does that mean? You got eight kids, and we talked about this, and I'd rather die in your ring, and my kids will understand that their father was a warrior? This ain't the Roman days. Like, what's really going on with this dude, man? Do he really believe? The nonsense that come out of his mouth, speak it, believe it, achieve it. Talk about all the things that he dreamt about and his, his religion. I, look, people, come on, man. But for you guys, dog, Deontay Wilder fans, making excuses for him, you make yourself look retarded. And you make yourself look like you are a person that make excuses in your life. You're making my point for me when I talk about black people. You're making... You making others people point when they talk about the conditions and the mindset of black people and what do I mean? You make excuses for everything. You won't hold yourself accountable for anything. You know what I mean? I grew up in a bad neighborhood. That's why I resorted to selling drugs. I grew up in a bad neighborhood. That's why I resorted to being a gangster. I grew up in a bad neighborhood. That's why I didn't go to school and learn. Hold on. You telling me you grew up in a, you grew up in a bad neighborhood? We got millions of people who became millionaires, whether it's sports, lawyers, doctors, you know what I mean, scientists that are black that grew up in those same conditions. And you telling me that you and you, you couldn't have pulled yourself up out of that? No, you made... You made choices, and the choices that you made were wrong, and now you're living with the choices, whether that be unemployment, whether that be you got a record, maybe that be you can't vote, maybe you can't get a job because you don't have the skills. You made the decision, now you got to live with it, and you don't even have to live with the decision. You can say, I'm going to you know, rise above what I did in the past and do better. 
That's why I keep talking about the barbershop dude. It's the poison. He's leading you guys to the hellfire. He's leading you guys in your life, your real life. Cause this is we. This is like reality. This is not even reality. YouTube. Know what I mean? But I 100% believe that what's in that music, that hip hop that I love, you are the same people that actually believe what these rappers actually say. And having said that, if you are one of those people, you actually believe what Bible Shop Conversations have to say. And he's leading you to the wrong place. And as my brother, I don't want to see you at the wrong place because I got to walk beside you. You represent me as I represent you. I don't care if you're in Chicago or I'm in Florida. We represent each other. At the end of the day, we don't have to even know each other. I don't want to get too into that. But that's where I'm at with this thing with the excuses, man. Kenny Ballas was there to help you, bro. Every time the clinch, he was pulling off Tyson Fury from waxing you, dragging you, doing you dirty, treating you like a child in there, man. You know what I mean? You embarrassed the whole black nation. On Black History Month. Like you did us real dirty with that whack ass performance. Now I was just watching a Sport Night Cars, right? Like like two days ago. Was it yesterday? And uh he I'm, I'm listening to the dude, he like, yeah, Deontay Wilder had a uh he had a uh, oh no, nah, yeah, yeah, Deontay Wilder had a ring entrance and he had a suit on and he had some dude that came out and was rapping, I guess and then you know, Sport Night Cars said, I guess he uh I guess he was talking, he said, I didn't understand nothing he said, but I guess he was talking about black people or something, but I don't know, the way he said it was real funny, man, go subscribe, go subscribe to Sport Knockers, man, yo, he had me dying, bro, he's like, I don't even know what the dude was saying, and real talk, I didn't know what he was saying either, son, like, all I knew, that it was probably about some black power, some, some barbershop conversation type of hip-hop, you <laughs> know what I mean, I'm pretty sure it was some black in there, you dig, but at the end of the day, bro, come on, man, Costume was too hairy. Bob Aaron was like, listen, man, look, who told him to put that costume on? Who told him to put it on and it had all that weight? And, 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 and more importantly, who told him to put a mask on to cover his nose where he can't get oxygen, walk in through uh, the ring walk, mad slow, and you breathing heavy, sweating, losing air. Like, are you stupid or retarded? Are you gonna let me hold your nose until I and close your mouth until I say stop? Or are you gonna push me away like, bro, I can't breathe. Let me get up off this thing. Like, are you that special? Like, what's really going on with you, bro? Good <laughs> God, man, you making us look bad on so many levels, man. And now you out here making excuses, ESPN picking it up, talking about a costume which made you lose the fight. Millions of people watch ESPN like. That big doofy dude that got beat up said that the costume was the cause of his, you know what I mean? Demise? Like, real talk? Come on, bro. But then the, 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 the fans, you got to hold them accountable. You could, be a, you could be a fan and supporter, right? Because I heard a lot of YouTubers say, well, he, he's still a king. He's not a king. He, he's not a king. We don't have black kings. There's no king, bro. Stop calling. You, I guess you can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself to make you feel good. But nobody looks at you as a king. Just know that. So, that's that. Look, he's still the best in boxing. That's cool. You can say he's the best in boxing, even though, even though many people, 99.99% people don't think that. That's fine. Because you are his fan. So that's good, right? You may believe he's still the best in boxing, even with this loss. That's fine. That's cool. Even though 99.99% .99 of people don't believe that. Because the argument is that he... Deontay Wilder being Deontay Wilder being Deontay Wilder is the king of boxing because he lost to top two heavyweight champion and your boy ex-champion and your boy Tyson Fury. Only reason why that argument is a little bit, you know, skewed in my opinion is because prior to the fight, prior to the first fight, none of these guys thought that Tyson Fury had a chance. Everybody said Tyson Fury was a hype job. You know, the Klitschko fight didn't really matter because Klitschko was old. You, you know the stories. So, I know how you guys looked at Tyson Fury prior to. And now you guys are making Tyson Fury a beast because he beats your guy. That's why it's skewed. That's why I'm like, bro, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you make, you make a good point, but the way you're making the point makes it, it's, it's, it's just wrong. But... I listen in my head and I understand and I remember. So a lot of fans are just hearing what you're saying and saying, yeah, Fury is number two. 
which he is. But the way they said it, you know what I mean? Let them tell it. Fury was trash, disgusting, fat, heavyweight, you know what I mean? Overweight and couldn't punch his way out of the paper bag. That was the headline. That was the story. That's what these guys was running with until he ragtagged that dude. But at the end of the day, man, I just feel like these excuses got to stop. I mean, I'm tired of hearing different YouTubers come out with a new excuse. And then I hear, I read an article and Deontay Wilder says the real story will come out. What real story? What, what real story? The story is you got beat up, bro. The story is you can't fight going backwards, bro. That's the story. Man, my God. This is, I mean, good Lord. People, I'm going to leave you with this real quick. Now, I work out, right? I work out, went to the park two days ago, jogging. Dude, white dude, he was jogging backwards. I'm like, good God, damn. That must be, that must be tough. I tried it. Real tough on my legs. It fatigued my legs out very, very quickly. Uh, I start doing jump rope backwards as well. Because whatever fatigues my legs out quickly, I want to participate in that so I can get better and obviously raise my, my stamina by doing so. Now, I always said that beating Deontay Wilder, you got to push him back. You got to push him on the back foot. The reason why I said push him on the back foot because he can't box going backwards. He can't box going forward. But putting the pressure on him, it, it makes him do exactly what he does naturally. He goes straight back in the line. Therefore, you're able to come over the top, go to the body. There's some openings, some big shots you can make and land without worrying about the fire back, meaning the counter punch. Because he can't fight going backwards. He doesn't know how to counter as well. But when I did the workout, I learned something every day. I said, oh, I, didn't, I never put two and two together. If you make someone go backwards, you ever walk backwards or ran backwards and find yourself looking behind you because you didn't feel comfortable, you didn't know what was behind you, you felt like you was going to trip over? It's the same thing in the square. It's the same thing in the ring. You understand me? Running backwards, fighting going backwards when you're uncomfortable doing so, you're looking backwards, you find yourself putting your hands on the ropes, you know what I mean? Getting your bearings, finding out where you at so you can understand distance control, right? It fatigues your legs out, right? It keeps you mentally uh, fatigued because you're thinking about so many things you got to do. So the, that's the, so it's a physical, right? It's a physical uh, 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 edge, if you will, uh, or it's a physical component to pushing somebody back as well. I only thought about the, 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 the boxing point, the component, the boxing you know, a point of view of it. But now when I look at it, I, it's a physical point of it too. I never looked at it that way. So the next fight is going to look the same way, point blank period. It's going to look the same way. How many fighters pushed Deontay Wilder back the way Fury did? Now, Ortiz obviously pushed him back, but not like Fury. He put the pressure. He fought in the inside. You see what I'm saying? He did him the way you do a guy who's the boogeyman that only has uh, the one, one thing to do that can actually hurt you. He's left, can't do anything. My point is, man, the fight going to look the same. And I can't wait to see it. Now, I want to see Joshua versus Fury, but this guy, this cocksucker, he going to enact the rematch clause so he can, you know, have six months to talk his talk and talk about how he's going to come back better. But the guy doesn't even jog. The guy doesn't even work out traditionally like boxers do or and should, right? He had never took the time to do so. So this is the reason why uh, he is where he's at in this point in his career. Look. Excuses are for punks. Please, if you're black, I'm talking to you. Please stop making excuses, man. I'm tired of hearing it, and I don't have any sympathy for you, bro. Yeah, I get it. There's pages out there that will cater to you. But if you want to be catered to and not be told the truth to, then you should subscribe to your boy, Barbershop Conversations, 78 Sports TV, Black Fan fight fan, whatever his name is. Those are the channels you need to go to when you're a black person that's insecure and don't have or don't know what your identity is. Those are the pages you need to go to. Over here, we turn black men into men. Over here, black men that are already men are over here. Black men that can think and look at the world subjectively are over here. People that can have an intellectual conversation to go back and forth and have great dialogue, whether we agree or not, are over here. Not over there. I just got braces in my mouth, so I'm talking a little funny here. It feel like when you get braces, like a whole bunch of saliva is in your mouth, but it really isn't. So I got to get used to it, get my mouth moving and shaking. But at the end of the day, you rocking with your boy CBT. Subscribe to the channel. Peace.